Hello everyone and welcome to another super science video with the Mass Dent Regional Library. I'm Miss Stephanie, one of the children's librarians here, and for this month I decided to do an experiment on oil spills, like in the ocean. And while we're definitely not by the ocean or in the ocean, you can still do a few things to show how hard it can be to clean up oil when it spills in the water. But there is some ways, and I'll show you how to do that as well, that scientists and other rescue people help the animals that have gotten in the oil by using dish soap. So for that part of the experiment, you'll need the dish soap and the feathers. And some of the other, I know this seems like a lot of items, but some of them are just, you don't have to do in there. I just added them in there to make them more fun. Like I'll show you the ones that you don't actually have to do, but there's a little tugboat. And let's see, I also have cocoa powder. You don't really need that as well. And the food coloring, but the things that you definitely will need You'll need some vegetable oil and just things to clean up the oil. I used Q-tips, a sponge, and cotton balls. And you'll need a cup and spoon to mix up the oil. And then you'll need some water. You'll need a plastic container, like something that kind of looks like that. I'm gonna use something a little smaller, but you'll probably be more likely to find something like this around your place. And then because it can get messy, I recommend a t-shirt or if you have a lab coat like me. You can do that as well. And the last thing is a tablecloth, like the one I have here, because that'll help prevent get oil and other messy things on furniture. So let's go ahead and get this experiment started. Okay, so as you can see, I got my container. I filled it with water. I put some of the blue food coloring in it. You don't have to, but I just did it because I thought you guys might like it make look a little more like the ocean. Now the next thing we're gonna do is I poured some vegetable oil in this cup. You can just put it straight in the water or you can do what I am about to do and use cocoa powder to make it look a little bit more like oil. So I'm gonna take a spoonful of this, gonna plop some of it, not maybe not all of it, but just a little bit into my, I'm gonna mix it up. And I think it'll also make it a little easier for us to see the oil spill on the water as well. So I've got my oil. Let me put this spoon aside. And then here's my little tugboat. You don't have to do that either, but I just thought it'd be a little fun. And then I'm going to pour the oil into the tugboat. And look, oh, the boat's in the water. Nothing too bad's going on here, but uh-oh, there's a storm. There's a storm. And then suddenly, oh, it tips and the oil has spilled into the water. So here's the part of the experiment is like, how do you think we can get this oil up? Let me put the boat over here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is maybe we can get some cotton balls. Maybe they can get the oil up. So let's see if this works. They'll get a little bit up. Not a lot though. Yeah, it's taking a while. And as you can see, the oil is just splitting apart as I'm doing this. So let me try one more time. Okay, well, this is gonna take a really long time with a lot of cotton balls to get the oil up, isn't it? Let's try something else. Let's try a Q-tip. Maybe get the smaller ones out. And But like it gets dirty super quick. And as you can see, it's not doing making much of a dent in all this oil in the water. Um, Let's see, what else can I use? Oh, we can do a sponge. Let's do a sponge and see if that gets any of it up. All right. Well, this is a little more effective. Like it's working a little better, but it's still, I think you're gonna need a really big sponge and a really bit, a lot. And it, see, it's just, there's still almost as much oil in the water as before I tried to clean it up. And so, what, you can try different things and see if any of those will work to help get oil out of your water. And that's the nice thing about science is there's more than one solution to a problem. For this case, this is a big problem because there's a lot of water and a lot of oil and we don't make like really huge sponges or cotton balls to get it up. So the best way to prevent an oil spill, I mean, to you know, clean it up is to prevent it from happening at all. And that can be making safer ships, just making safer ways to t put oil across the ocean. And I'm just hoping that this experiment shows you how 
because it when the oil goes in our ecosystem or our world it can kill plants and animals and it can some of them take even years to clean up and there's been a lot of oil spills in the world um two of the most famous ones are the exxon Valdez in 1989 in near Alaska, which killed a lot of otters and fish and other animals. And then there was one in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010 called the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. And that caused a lot of damage as well. And there are ways to help the animals though. And I'm gonna show you a way that some scientists and rescue workers help the birds get the oil out of their feathers. So let's switch gears for a minute. All right, so we got our oil back. Now I'm gonna put some feathers into the oil and this is gonna show you that the, and it's really slimy and it helps, per, like the oil makes them heavy so they can't fly or swim very well and sometimes they even drown. And so science and rescue workers, they found a way that gets the oil out of their feathers and that is dish soap. So let me move this aside. And this is a very small example of what they do in the wild, but and it takes a really long time, but it is good to know that there is something that can be done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some dish soap on my napkin. And then I'm gonna take, I'll take, start with this feather right here. And I'm gonna use the dish soap and I'm just gonna clean the feather. And they have to be really careful because I mean, obviously this feather is, isn't on an actual bird. And when scientists and rescue workers are trying to get it off birds, they move around and they are scared of people. So it is a lot harder for them to get it off. But the good news is that you can see on my napkin, the oil is coming out of this feather. If there's still more on it and it does take a while to do it, but as you can tell, it can come off thanks to scientists who spend days and weeks just trying to help these poor birds with the oil in their feathers. So it's continuing to come off. And so I just wanted to show you just a way that they help the birds that have been caught in an oil spill. All right, I hope you enjoyed doing that experiment with me. And also I had some books that I found while I was looking into information for this video. The first one is called Penguins Don't Wear Sweaters. And this is by Markir Kimura. And this book talks about there's an oil spill near where penguins lived and someone tried to knit them a bunch of sweaters to keep them warm to, from whether they're being cleaned from the oil. And is this a good idea? Well, this book talks about it. And uh, what I like about it is it has great pictures. That's one of the things that I liked about it. And also it's just, it just gives it like a, basic information of what happens during an oil spill and what people do to help the animals like these penguins recover and get rid of the oil from their feathers. So I enjoyed that book and I hope you do as well. The main book that I used when I was doing research for this video is called One Turtle's Last Straw and this is the real life rescue that sparked a sea change. And this happened when they found a turtle in the ocean that had a straw stuck up its nose. And it was having a really hard time breathing or just living in the ocean. But there were some, fortunately there were some scientists who helped and they got rid of it without hurting the turtle. And so he was able to go back and live a life. But there was still a bunch of plastic living in the ocean. And Elisa Boxer, the author of this book, did a great job of providing some websites, some other books that you can learn more about pollution in the ocean and you may think the ocean's so big and I'm just a kid what can I do to help it is there anything I could do to help it well it's just small things can add up and make a difference like just something as simple as like if you're using a plastic stroll just don't throw it on the ground put it in a trash can with a lid if you just throw it on the ground it might get into a river or stream and it might get out into the ocean but if you put it in the lid it's going to go to the dump where it belongs and not in the ocean and you cannot like flush chemicals down the toilet or just there's a, a couple other ways that I've included in a slide after this video and I also included some of the websites from this book if you wanted to learn more about that as well. Thank you so much for joining me today for this month's science experiment. I look forward to sharing more with you soon. Have a good day. Bye.